So, so hello everyone. Today we have one of the elite coaches from the WTA tour. He was instrumental in adding Grand Slam trophies to Serena Williams' name. He won the inaugural WTA Coach of the Year in the year 2018 uh, for coaching Naomi Osaka. And she, like, she made her breakthrough with him by winning Indian Wells and US Open. And presently he's working with former world number one Carolina, Carolina Pliskova. So Sasha Alexander Bajan, welcome to our show. Uh, thanks and for having me. Yeah. And thanks for connecting from Dubai. Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, so first of all, uh, many congratulations. Carolina made it to the quarterfinals of uh, Dubai and she beat Maria Sakari en route to that. And so what are your goals for 2023 with uh, Pliskova? Um, the goals haven't changed. You know, when I first started mm -hmm. with her, she... She has been number one in the world already. She has won almost every title there is other than a Grand Slam. And yeah, it's not a secret. That's something that she really wants. She wants to win a Grand Slam and that's something we're going to work towards too. And that's why I hope that I can help her and yeah, be the coach to guide her to it. We came close to it once, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll give it another try now. So what have you been working on predominantly with Pliskova in the in your second innings with her? Um, yeah, so there is, um, you know, there's different approaches to the same method, kind of, you know, you just got to find with each player, you got to find a way that works for them. That's, I think, the biggest part of coaching. Mm -hmm. um, there's not so much different things you can do, but there's different ways you can go. So I'm just trying to take a different route now and trying to boost her confidence, making mm -hmm. sure she believes in her weapons, making her try to feel good on the court. And yeah, there's just different ways about how to go about it. And I, I think that's the biggest challenge for a coach there is. Mm -hmm. And also she has had a pretty decent run this year. Congratulations on that. She made it to the quarterfinals at the Australian Open this year. And also, since she's the former world number one, so and do you think like this year she could erase that title of slamless world number one? Like previously, we have had Elena and Jankovic, Dinara Safina, who were world number ones, but they couldn't reach there, couldn't get their Grand Slam title. And also, if I'm not wrong, Simona Halep, she was world number one, and Carolina, uh, uh, Caroline Wozniacki, she was world number one too, before they got their first Grand Slam title. Yeah. So do you think she can erase that title now this year? I hope so. We're working really hard for it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's, a, she's a very hard, very dedicated worker, you know. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that's beautiful with people who are a little bit older, um, you know, I've also worked with younger players. The beautiful thing about working with older players is that they kind of know what they want and they try to put everything they have. They try to maximize their whole day, everything around it to get mm -hmm. to that goal. And that plays a very big role. And I, I, I hope that I can help her. Yeah, only only mm -hmm. time will tell, but we're working hard for it. And, I, you know, if I wouldn't believe she could, I wouldn't be here. Definitely. So what are the pros of working with people who are older than, you know, older, old enough to play tennis and have more experience? What are the pros of, you know, playing, uh, coaching them? Yeah, you know, like, obviously, if you if you work with someone who's like, when I started with Naomi, you know, it was kind of her second or third full year on tour. She hasn't really seen much, you know, so you want to take a little bit more in. It's a little bit more about the experience. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more about finding your way, finding your place, making sure you find a routine. Um, this goes from what time do I wake up if my match is at 12? What time do I have breakfast? All these things, how to function the best. What is the best way for me to warm up, to cool down? When you work with all the, you know, players, you know, who have been around the tour already, they kind of already know a little bit how their body works. They have a better understanding of how to function ideally. And then you're just trying to piece certain certain parts together and maximize on what you can. So it, it takes a little bit less effort from me in trying to help her maximize her own potential that day because she already knows what is best for her and I don't have to guide her that much. So it's like optimizing that day. For sure. 
yeah, you have, you know, like you have 100% of your patients, mm -hmm. you have 100% of attention span, you have 100% of your energy. And if you, mm -hmm. which again is totally understandable, but if you lose it going sightseeing, if you lose it uh, arguing with the boyfriend that they hear and is there, mm -hmm. then that everything takes away from performing on court. And I try to give her as much of these 100% that I can, and that is something that is a little bit easier with these more mature players who know, you know, what, what they mm -hmm. need to pay attention. All right. And also like with Phyllis Kovas, and you previously mentioned, both of you were really close in the year 2021. So it was her first ever Wimbledon final. Many yeah. congratulations to you on that. And also it was a pretty emotional one, pretty emotional major final for her. She broke down uh, during the post-match ceremony. How was your experience playing world number one Ash Barty on the biggest stages of tennis? Yeah, damn, damn her. <laughs> <laughs> damn her. Um, no, no, I mean, Look, if you want to lose in a Grand Slam mm -hmm. final, you want to lose to to the number one in the player, number one player in the world. If that's like a a, a condolence price or something, you know, mm -hmm. um, it was it was an emotional one for me too because I can tell how bad she wants this. You know, she she really really wants it, and I'm always trying to tell her actually to find a way to relax herself a little bit more because mm -hmm. if you want something too bad, it's just as bad as not wanting it enough. But um, it was a good ride. It was a, a crazy event because it was still in the middle of COVID kind of. We were all in a bubble in the hotel. Uh, we couldn't really go out and all these things put together. It, it, it kind of, I felt like also it bonded our team a little bit, you know, because there's not many influences coming from the outside because all you have is the people around you. And um, overall, it was, of course, it was a beautiful experience, even though we lost, but... Yeah, still, and, still heads um, off to her, heads off to, to Ash, yeah, and congrats. And also, if I'm not wrong, it's your first Wimbledon final as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I, mm. yes, absolutely. I mean, I've had a couple of them with Serena, you know, mm. um, but as a officially as a coach. head coach and all that, um, yeah, for sure, for sure, mm. so, but yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about other players you have worked with, so... A lot of players feel overwhelmed when they face Serena Williams' power. And could you describe your experience while facing the legend? Yeah, so there is, um, I, I do believe that certain people have some sort of energy that, you know, like when she steps in a room, you know that even if you don't know her, you don't know who she is, you just feel like, hey, that's someone important. Like there's a certain aura around her. And the best tennis players in the world, they have this capability of making their own court look so small and mm -hmm. mine look so big. So even I know when I was practicing with her and hitting with her every day, mm -hmm. somehow my court felt always bigger than hers. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not possible because I know those lines are straight. But why do I feel so much <laughs> pressure? And um, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing how she does that. It's very hard to teach someone. It's, it's a combination of, you know, body language. Um, uh, there, there, there's the, the shots of themselves, um, the way they carry themselves, the behavior, all these things put together that make you feel, you know, even though I'm 200 pounds, I'm not a small guy, I'm 6'4", 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I felt small next to her somehow. <laughs> so that's an, amazing, that's an amazing capability that mm -hmm. she had. So when she was at her prime, you were her hitting partner and your partnership went on, lasted for almost eight successful years. Yeah. So can you tell us what makes Serena so competent, relentless and others on the tour fail to emulate? Like if you are six foot four inches tall and you feel small in front of her. So what is it that I makes mean, Serena... Could... If I could really pinpoint to one thing and teach that to others, I would write a book and be a millionaire overnight, you know? So that's just, I do believe that's a, that's a certain God-given gift for her. Like she was meant to be a tennis player, same as Usain Bolt was meant to be a runner. Michael mm -hmm. Phelps was meant to swim. Like if he was doing any other sport, he wouldn't be that great. So I do believe people are born with a certain purpose. She found hers early in life. 
while having also this amazing coach and her father who dedicated everything behind her and raised them from a young age to never doubt themselves, to always believe in themselves, to always play to win, not, not to lose, never be afraid. So there are so many factors that come in and that have been repeated throughout the years and years and years and years that made her this incredible tennis player and athlete that she is. So you're definitely a Serena fan, I assume. No, of course. Who is not? <laughs> like, not? No, even yeah. the people, <laughs> even the people that hate her secretly love her. I know. <laughs> uh, no. yeah, that that is true. And uh, how did you feel when she announced her retirement? D did you think like she has a few more years ahead of her? Yeah, so I even tweeted about it because I didn't say, you know, like I, I, was, I wasn't one of those guys who then said, mm -hmm. ah, you know, like bye bye queen and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, didn't post anything on my socials mm -hmm. because from her interview, she kind of left the door a little bit open. Like what she said was like, I don't see it as a retirement. And then all of a sudden she was like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't retire. Da, da, da. So I kind of thought maybe, maybe I was just hoping, you know, um, that she would come back somehow and just still try to get this one, one slam in or, or, or one tournament. And, um, but yeah, so I, it's sad, obviously, you know, if the sport loses one of its great, uh, greatest players to ever play the game for sure, it's sad. And, um, but on the other hand, you know, if one, one great player leaves, you know, another grade will rise and it, it makes the tour more exciting. And there is a generational change going on right now in a lot of sports. So this is something beautiful to witness and to be part of a new journey. But it was sad. Yeah. So in women's tennis, who can not not emulate Serena? So at least do 50 percent of what Serena did. Who do you think in women's tennis? Well, yeah, I mean. Right you know, I do believe that Naomi had a chance to be right there. You know, we won the U.S. Open, Australian Open back to back. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe she had the chance. I do believe if mm -hmm. she really wants to come back, I want to say she still has the chance. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, yeah, Iga Swiatek is the woman to beat. She's very dominant. I, I saw now she's lost, I think, not more than, what was it, eight games in the last 10 matches, which yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. So her so, previous tournament was like she just played three hours of tennis and then she got the trophy <laughs> yeah yeah so she's uh she's so dominant right now so she's definitely the one to beat but then on the other hand also arena sabalenka hasn't lost a match yet you know this season she's 12 and 0 so i'm excited there's like two three girls you're really going to have to look out for that can be a really dominant force in women's tennis mm -hmm. but again I'm, I'm here with carolina and we're trying to interrupt that as much as we can <laughs> and also speaking about Naomi, you played a major role in her breakthrough in the year 2080. You had the captain seat in her box, and also it was your first Grand Slam final. But yeah. sadly, it was one of the info one of the infamous moments took place during that final with Serena's meltdowns. And having worked with Serena, like uh, if I'm not wrong, you were part of both the teams in in that particular final. So technically, uh, you were part of both the teams. So how did you react to the 2018 US Open final? No, so so I I stopped working with Serena in 2015. So early 2015. Okay. Okay. So I've been before that. So actually, yeah, yeah, yeah it was 2000, 2015, 2000, 2014, 2000, end of 2014 to the beginning mm -hmm. of 2015. So, between that, I was already with a couple of other players, but still mm -hmm. because we had such a close relationship. And if you're with someone for over eight years, it's um, it, it's very tough. I mean, I lived in her house for three and a half years. You know, um, I, I saw her as my as my younger sister, to be honest. And um, it was a very very emotional finals for me. Obviously, I mm -hmm. I, I tend to try to put emotions aside, you know, you strictly look objective, you know, I'm in, I'm in Naomi's corner, my job is to help her, she hired me for a reason, mm -hmm. no matter who's on the other side, if it was my mom, my sister, it wouldn't matter, I would try to give Naomi the best chance that I, you know, that I have, because that's what I owe her, that's what I signed up for, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, yeah, that night before the slam, you know, I, uh, before the finals, I, I, I didn't sleep, obviously, 
I even got death threats from some Serena fans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, 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 and uh, it was it was a very emotional, emotional, um, emotional final itself with everything that happened. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at the end of the day, we won, and that's what what you know what I was hired to do to help my player, help my player win. We got the job done, and mm -hmm. yeah, I was I was happy. Mm -hmm. So the succeeding that U.S. Open final. Naomi confessed having bouts of depression. But on the contrary, both of you, you went on to win the Australian Open 2019 just in, in a span of four months. And also she turned world number one simultaneously. How did you guys manage to bounce back in a very short time? You know, um, there's a few things about people that have a lot of success you will find out. Um, I, I don't believe that, you know, let me rephrase it here. There's two types of people, okay? If you have success, there's one person that is like, oh, this tastes nice. I like it. I want it more. Give me more. What do I have to do to feel like this again? And then there's others who will relax a little bit, you know, that say, oh, okay, I achieved this now and I want to relax. So I have to be honest, after the Grand Slam final, you know, it was actually pretty easy. I didn't have to motivate Naomi very much. You know, she was really hungry. We got straight back to work. Um, we even, you know, she had, you win the uh, US Open on Saturday, you have Sunday morning America and Monday, we were already on the way to Tokyo, you know, for another tournament. So the next day I bothered her asking her, hey, what time do you want to practice? And she just won her first Grand Slam. So um, she was she was very hungry. I was still hungry, and um, it, it just worked out. It just worked out that way. I think she is still hungry. But, uh, <laughs> don't you think so? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not with anymore. I can't comment. I can't mm -hmm. comment on that. But um, I, I would I would hope so for her. But um, uh, yeah, I can't comment on on. On that because I'm not around her anymore. I don't see her. I don't, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. how she wakes up. So yeah. So last month she announced the happy news. She announced that she was pregnant. And do you think with the current level of competition on the tour, she can bounce back to her former level? I do always want to think that she has the ability to bounce back. Um, it's going to take a lot of work, but she's still mm -hmm. young. Um, the way I see, you know, also the way she's gifted mm -hmm. with her body and her shots, um, you know, she's very fast around the court. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely think if she gets the right people around her to help her make sure she dedicates as much as she can of mm -hmm. besides being a mother, everything else mm -hmm. into tennis, then I, I do want to give her a chance. Yeah. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. But can she do it? Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, speaking about motherhood and tennis, you have uh, you have worked with one of the fierce tennis players on the WTA tour, who is Vika, and lately she has had a brilliant, brilliant run at the Australian Open. So, do you think she can pull off another slam? Yeah, for sure. You know, like if she was at the semis in in, mm -hmm. in Australia, um, she wasn't far away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, she is an unbelievable fierce competitor like mm -hmm. she would yeah if you're on court on the other side she would do whatever she can in order to get this win in and that means a lot you know there's not many um, athletes that I know that are this eager to win and to do no matter what to win you know like I, I gotta be honest I played a couple of times squash with her and it's impossible mm -hmm. to beat her like she would even cheat me a couple of times just to get the win in. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, <laughs> she wants to win so bad. And it's, uh, I hope that helps her. I hope that doesn't weigh her down. I hope that helps mm -hmm. her. And um, yeah, she's not far from it. She's mm -hmm. playing some high level tennis for sure. Mm -hmm. But why do you think like it, it has been uh, do, uh, challenging for the WTA tennis players after becoming mothers? Like in the open era, we just had Kim Kleisters who pulled off a slam. And 
what and Serena was there on the doorstep four times Rika was there once so do you think like what is stopping them and you know what is so challenging like they are unable to get that slam I mean I first of all mm -hmm. you know the the transformation the, the, mm -hmm. that you go through with your body obviously that is uh that is something that weighs on you. I can't, I can't speak from it because I would never experience, you know, what they experience and what they go through. But mm -hmm. it, it's a fact that, you know, that takes a heavy toll on your body. Mm -hmm. And then the same, I do believe that the bond between a mother and the child is for sure mm -hmm. also, I'm not saying a father doesn't love his child, but I think that mm -hmm. the bond there is a little stronger mm -hmm. and that maybe, you know, it's really, Really tough for them to dedicate also like really this 100% only to like be so selfish and go out when they have their kid on the side and they sleep with the baby and stuff so there are so many factors in that that I think that mothers I have to say struggle mm -hmm. with a little bit more you know and um, I, I yeah I wouldn't be even able to to name all of them you're gonna have to ask some mm -hmm. of those ladies these questions they would be way way better they would answer these way better, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And also you had collaborated with Diana Yastremska and presently with all the rockets going around in her home country, she of Ukraine, she's having a tough time. Do you have any words for her? Uh, she's, um, she's so talented. So um, yeah, it's kind of, it's tough to see the ranking that she has right now, but that mm -hmm. doesn't, mean that she's playing that type of level of tennis you know mm -hmm. um she had a little bit of bad luck with that anti-doping um uh, case you know that uh yeah whatever happened there was unfortunate mm -hmm. and she was able to continue but she lost a couple of ranking points mm -hmm. then with the war you know i'm sure that weighs heavy on her and can't be easy you know, she has friends there. I once was there in Odessa to, you know, before we started, when we started collaborating. And then, you know, I was told that that whole square where she walked me around and showed me a little bit of a city. Mm -hmm. She, you know, the father showed me a video and said, look at the square now. The square was gone. There's just nothing there. So I can't even imagine what she goes through and how hard it must be. And the fact that she's still able to, you know, focus and put that energy onto tennis and tries her best is amazing. And I, I do believe she's going to be back in the top 25, 20s in, in, not, in not such a long time. I think that's good to hear from you. Like she'll bounce back uh, pretty soon. And yeah. also like you have been working with all high profile tennis players, mostly from WTA tour. What made you choose this uh, career path, hitting partners, coaching? <laughs> I I mean to be honest I didn't choose it they kind of chose me mm -hmm. you know I even declined the first job with Serena but then they called back and said look we really don't have anybody else we kind of mm -hmm. want you and um, I was like okay I'll do it mm -hmm. so um, I, I kind of slipped into this role you know I grew up with three women in my mm -hmm. house you know my mom my sisters my mm -hmm. father died when I was 15 so I, I've been very comfortable around women um, mm -hmm. I, I stayed with Serena in the house, Venus, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. physiotherapist and assistant and four girls, mm -hmm. you know, and me for okay. three and a half years. So I've had offers from guys. It's not that I don't want to coach guys. It's just that it has to make sense for me mm -hmm. um, with the type of personality of the player and their goals. And I have to make sure that I am the coach who is able to help them, you know. And um, if I think I can, then I'm happy to work with a guy. I had some offers in the past. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sure hopefully, hopefully I will get some more in the future, but it just has to make sense. So yeah, I don't label me just as, it just happened to be all girls somehow. <laughs> so since you mentioned about uh, living at Serena's place, so which year was it? For three that years was Mm. Yeah, that was from 2007 till 2010, 11, and then mm -hmm. I moved out and I got myself. Mm -hmm. out. Okay, so they were already big stars by then, like both of them, Venus and Serena, they were dominating during those yeah. years. So. Yeah, so she already was, obviously she had her, well, she mm -hmm. kind of, 
like fell off a little bit 2005 2006 you know 2007 mm -hmm. was the year she started coming back a little bit more you know mm -hmm. but yeah when i walked into her living room there was trophies mm -hmm. from wimbledon us open australian open and yeah. as a 22 year old kid you know she was 24 also only at that time that's uh it's a little bit intimidating so yeah mm -hmm. yeah i had to make sure i mm -hmm. i keep my shit together <laughs> sorry but that's that's how but it is how was it living you know amidst of you know the two legends can you please tell us because i don't think so people on the tennis store itself they get to experience uh such things yeah so i don't know i'm genuinely i have I mean, it's a it's a gift and a curse. I, I I always say what I mean, and I mean what I say, and I mm -hmm. I'm not very starstruck. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you know, like yeah, if I, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you're sleeping in Serena Williams's house, and I was so mm -hmm. the the biggest thing that confused me was mm -hmm. that she trusted me so quickly. Like that was mm -hmm. something that I thought was really beautiful, and I didn't want to do anything to prove her wrong you know and that she that to take that trust away from her so that was something that always confused because i thought for sure she would be more protective or something or like you know but she welcomed me really instantly and that was something that i mm -hmm. i will never forget and i'm forever grateful the way she opened her door for me you know welcome me in the family that's that yeah that, that that's something that i was just i'm kind of speechless still about and i i don't know what she saw in me you know um but i'm, I'm very grateful that i i had these years with her and with her family and everybody around it and it was a it was an unbelievably wild ride mm -hmm. and um yeah i don't know if i would do it again but um <laughs> mm -hmm. no for sure i would for sure i would mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. yeah i'm very grateful for it but that's wonderful to know and a big piece of information that you have given us. I don't think so. Most of the people on the tour know like you were such an important role during those years to Serena and Venus. Yeah, thank so, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So also like since you said you're really comfortable around women like WTA, like you, you are really comfortable coaching them. But do you think in future you will coach any ADP player or whom would you like to coach rather? I don't know. I don't think about my next gig, honestly. Like, I really put everything I can into helping the player that I'm with right now. You know, mm -hmm. I sacrifice my own personal life. You know, I missed my mom's wedding because of a practice with Sloan Stevens. I missed my sister's wedding because of practice days, not even tournaments. It was just preseason practice days, you know. Mm -hmm. I haven't been at weddings. I haven't been at any funerals, no birthdays, no holidays. I never asked in my life for a day off. So I, I really, I really want to help my play. I also, obviously, I want to be the best and most successful coach that I can be. I want to be the best version of myself. And in order to do that, I have to help my player as much as I can. And that takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of work and, that's why I don't have time to think about anybody else or anything else. So I'm here for Kaya and that's my job and that's what I will try to do. Definitely. So, Thank you so much for your time, Sasha, today. It was wonderful talking to you. And thanks, thanks for all, all the inside stories of the WTA tour, share, sharing, sharing it with us. So it was a pleasure knowing everything. Oh, of course. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to meet you too. And thanks for having me. All right. Okay. Have a good day ahead and hopefully I'll see you soon. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, all bye. right. Bye. Bye-bye.